My next guest has spent years explaining the news and helping people understand how our country actually works and how it doesn't work and what we can do about it. So it is very fitting that her new book is out today on National Voter Registration Day. I'm thrilled to welcome Lee McGowan, AKA the internet's politics girl. I am her huge fan and her new book is out. It is called A Return to Common Sense, How to Fix America Before We Really Blow It. Lee, I, I'm so happy for you. I'm happy you're here. You talk about common sense, bringing it back. Do you see any of that in our, in our current American politics? Yeah. I do. I think there's a lot of hope for the current American politic. If you were at that DNC, if you watched that roll call, it was uh, like seeing uh, what we could be again. You're told all the time that we're red and blue, we're team this, team that, we're never coming back together. And what you saw at the DNC was people from all 50 states, all the territories coming together and saying, we are the United States of America and we are this diverse, crazy group and we can tease each other and we can be from here and we can say, oh, we're New York State and we're the best state in the nation. Everyone goes, boo, you know, like. Here's the thing. I hear you. Yeah. But that was at the DNC. Yeah. And everybody at the DNC is on board and they know who they're voting for. And everybody at the DNC are not enough people to elect anyone into anything. How do you engage the rest of the country? Lots of people who think the government doesn't work for them or politicians are, are corrupt and they're saying, I don't even want to go out and vote. How do you reach them? Yeah, okay. Well, this is why I wrote the book. It's why I started the Politics Girl Project in the first place. It was a way to talk about politics in a way that didn't make people want to go, I, I can't do it anymore. I don't want to talk about it. It's too much noise. Um, the book is called A Return to Common Sense for a reason because I think that's what we need to do, return to common sense. And it's also called A Political Book for Non-Political People because I think most people in America don't want to talk about this 24-7. Most people in America don't want to be inundated with all this mishigas all the time. They want to live their life have a good wage, take care of their families, and that's what most people want. And so what I did was I took six fundamental American principles that I thought, no matter where you sat on the political spectrum, right to left, non-voters, people that aren't engaged, and I said, okay, let's take these six fundamental American principles that I think, if you were an American, you would agree makes America America, and then all of a sudden, we can start from scratch. We can start on a common ground. And the very beginning of the book just does 20 pages of civics because most people don't know how this country works. And you can't fix something if you don't know how it works. School of rock for grown-ups. That's right. Um, your super fan base, I'm one of them, are politicos. They are people who follow politics. But tell me, how have you reached those people on the other side, right? Politics Girl was born during COVID. And your initial fan base were people who are already engaged. What have you learned? Who have you connected with outside? Yeah. Because that's how this grew. Yeah, no, it's a good question because people often say like, why are you doing this? You're just preaching to the choir. And I say, no, I'm not really preaching to the choir. What I'm doing is I'm teaching the choir the words to the song so they can go out and sing it to other people, right? There's people- That is a great way to put it. It is why people like me are your super fans. Yeah. I watch your stuff and I go, damn, we gotta do this. Yeah, because I'm saying what, you know, I'm saying what most people are thinking or I'm thinking what most people can't put into words. And then as soon as I say it, they go, yeah, that, that. Why aren't we just doing it like that? Why didn't you explain it like that? And I think once you know, you can't unknow. And once you know something, you care. And change only happens when people care. But part of common sense is getting, getting back to a place of common decency. Super nasty rhetoric is embedded in all American politics right now. It started with Republicans, but when Democrats don't fight fire with fire, they get criticized for bringing a spoon to a knife fight. So how do you get the super nasty out of where we are? How do you get back, not just to common sense, but to common decency, which we need to do? Yeah, I think we do need to do that, but I don't think you can force anyone to be decent. I think what you have to do is lead by example. I think that's always been the case. I think there's a reason people are so drawn to Tim Walls, because he's, such a good guy that they keep trying to find something wrong with him. He has to be evil. We're going to stick him with this ridiculous nickname, that kind of thing. But he's actually just a decent, kind, good man who also happens to be a hunter and a fisher and a veteran. And you think, did they create him in a lab? Is this a weird science moment? You know, but he really is what most of America is. No is way, ma'am. Nebraska. 
a good, kind, decent person, and most people are. We want a better America, and I think what we have to do is show people by example rather than forcing them to do it. You write about the importance of the word freedom. Freedom to Americans, it does very well in polling. We're seeing the Harris Walls campaign start to use freedom as a centerpiece of their campaign. Do you think it's connecting? Absolutely. I think freedom is the number one principle of my book. America is a land of freedom, and it doesn't matter if you are far-right MAGA or a far-left progressive. Everyone would say, yes, freedom is a fundamental American value. And then it depends on how we look at it. For me, I say, let's use these six fundamentals, America being a land of freedom as the first one, um, as a roadmap to get us out of this mess we're currently in. Use them as guideposts to say, yeah, this is how we see America and this is how we can get out of this moment. But then use those six as a lens in which to look at the country moving forward. And you say, all right, does this piece of legislation, does this legislator fit into America as a land of freedom? And you say, okay, I'm looking at all these abortion laws around the country. I'm looking at telling people they can't have a DNC when they need it and they die. Is that freedom to you? Doesn't matter where you sit in the political spectrum, you'd probably say, no, that doesn't really make me feel very free. If you can tell me that my rights change depending on my zip code, that doesn't seem to fundamentally go with America as a land of freedom. So it's a lens in which to look at our nation moving forward. Freedom. The strongest F word out there. Lee, congratulations on this book Thank and all your Stephanie. success. Can you believe this? This venture, this project was born during COVID, and now here it is.